A very good afternoon. You're watching News 9 with me, Akshita. And first up, the war of words over the Kaveri issue continues after Jay Lalita wrote to Prime Minister Modi seeking the formation of the Kaveri Management Board. Anand Kumar has again dismissed the reports. Anand Kumar has said that there is no question of formation of the Kaveri Management Board. And the politicking over uh, the management board continues uh, even as uh, Jayalalitha is gunning hard for the same. Anand Kumar has dismissed all the rumours. The union minister has made it very clear that the BJP government is not mulling over the formation of the Kaveri management board. My colleague Vergis joins us over the phone lines with more uh, details. Uh, Vergis, uh, once again, Anand Kumar coming to the rescue of uh, the BJP, but it looks like it's increased pressure for them from the Tamil Nadu government. Well, there is an increased pressure on the NDA, especially with regards to kind of the relationship that uh, the uh, AIDMK chief enjoys with uh, the Prime Minister. Uh, they have been allies uh, countering the Congress when they were uh, in the opposition. So it is quite interesting to see that the kind of uh, uh, the pressure that is coming to, in fact, form the Kaveri board has, in fact, uh, prompted a minister from Karnataka to say that uh, there is no intention on that uh, with that regard. But uh, the only thing is that it, the, though there is a lot of pressure, the stakeholders will be in fact uh, uh, consulted on that matter. That was the, the line that was taken by the Prime Minister himself. And now Anand Kumar, the, uh, the minister has in fact come out and said that uh, there is no question of forming this particular board because this particular board uh, will in fact take away the autonomy of the state to handle the waters uh, with regards to the Kaveri and therefore it will act detrimental to the existing agreements that are there. So he is in fact assured that a larger vote base that is there in the, in the south for the BJP that uh, it need not worry with regards to the sharing of Kaveri waters. Uh, Akshita. Right, uh, Abhagi. So also, of course, with regards to uh, Jayalal, it's quite clear that she's refusing to give up the fight. We've seen Sidra Maya going ahead and stating that Jayalal is politicizing uh, uh, the issue. Anand Kumar has also stated the same thing. But for how long can BJP remain mum is an all question altogether. With Jayalal persuading them, they need the support of a party as well in Rajya Sabha. Well, it is uh, quite interesting to see how the alliance will work. Will they, in fact, look for uh, the interest of the first state that gave the BJP a chance to rule in the south? Or will they go by an ally who is very desperately required for the passage of bills in the Rajya Sabha? So it is very interesting to note how the, it is going to be a tight uh, uh, rope walk for, these, uh, uh, for the people in the NDA, especially with regards to its relationship with the, the AIDMK. So it is quite interesting to see how this entire thing will pan out. But at the same time, there are has been assurances being given uh, to the Karnataka uh, government with regards to the matter. So let us, uh, we have to just wait and watch to see how this entire thing is going to pan out, uh, Akshita. Right, uh, Bagis, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. Uh, over the last one month, we have been seeing this issue play out. Anand Kumar has been coming to the rescue of the BJP, even as everyone is stating that the party may just give in to the pressure being put in by the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister with regards to the formation of that Kaveri Management Board. And well, trouble seems to be continuing for Ambrish. Now, a complaint has been filed against him in the Lokayukta, accusing him of illegally acquiring land in Bengaluru, Mandya and Mysore. The complaint has been filed by RTI activist Ravinder KR and he has accused Ambrish of providing false information to the Election Commission. <laughs> Bengaluru, Mysuru, Matu Mandia, and Agra Bridi Pradigale, Sulu Maitian and Ide, Tapula Segal and Ide, Mate, Avadariti, Kalamgana, Burti Mardane, Karnataka, Nagara Birde, Nivesan and Chike, and Yema, Sardamino, Tombatunda, and Ray, Ulang Namade, you go to Muru Nivesan and Napadir Pagan and Nigale, Lokak Gur Potizine, Yeno, Chunavana Sandra Dalukota, Yeno, Amriso, Kaluka Amanathan Tele, Kaluka Barbara, Villa Segal and Nirkondo, Sulu Maitikan and Nirkondo, Nivesan and Napadira. Yurasuro nijo ad amri swa to amarna toon vanto to kote la. Yuro nivasa ganla padile ko askarna yasuro ganla badha vane matkandi to ron sakanto to pura kote la. Ipa kya adhuno pura sersi na no loka ekse kya ikagle thoro na koti dene. Well, this is not, of course, the first time that Amrish has been accused in a land scam. Earlier, Commissioner of Muda Matai had filed a 670-page report on the Muda scam, alleging that Amrish had illegally acquired land. 
and um, Ryujin, all sorts of trouble there uh, already. Uh, his name coming up in two different land scams uh, and it is understood that he allegedly owns three sites in violation of the rules. It is understood that even for the BDA records, Amrish had entered his residential address as a hotel address and the BDA even went on to accept the same. Of course, uh, Ravindra Kayar, who is an RTI activist, has called for uh, Amrish to go ahead and resign from his post as housing minister on moral grounds uh, and it is understood that he claims Amrish has procured the sites by submitting false documents. So now he's gone ahead and approached the Lokayukta for the same. Moving on, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who was once denied a visa to enter the United States over the communal rights, is expected to receive the honor of addressing a joint session of the U.S. Congress during a visit to Washington in September. California Republican Ed Royce, who is the chairman of the House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee, wrote to House Speaker John Boner and asked, what, asked that he invite Modi to address a joint session of the House and Senate during his trip. Boner's office did not immediately announce a, a response to the letter, which was also signed by North Carolina Republican Representative George Holding. Congressional aides said they expected an invitation would be issued to the Indian leader. The administration of uh, President George W. Bush denied Modi a visa in 2005 under a 1998 U.S. law barring entry to foreigners who have committed particularly severe violations of religious freedom. President Barack Obama instead congratulated Modi on his election victory in mid-May and invited him to the White House. The United States, which sees India as a natural ally and potential counterbalance to China and Asia, is eager to expand business as well as security cooperation with the Modi government. However, the relationship has failed to live up to that billing due to bureaucratic and regulatory obstacles in India to expand business ties. And a major rejig is on the cards for the Congress. Several behind-the-scenes meetings have been held by the chief ministers of the Congress who have been facing the heat. Prithviraj Chauhan has met with Ahmed Patel as well as A.K. Antony. It is learned that Chauhan has conveyed to the party top brass that the NCP's opposition to him centered on him not clearing two to three files of vested interests were problematic. Assam sitting Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi has stepped down and the Congress leaders are looking for a replacement for the veteran leader. Tarun Gogoi has also been facing the heat from rebels in the Assam Congress. Well, around 45 MLAs are against Gogoi continuing in office. Hemant Biswas has also met with Sonia Gandhi and has asked her to replace Tarun Gogoi immediately. Even Haryana Chief Minister Bupendra Huda is facing the possibility of facing the axe. Uda met with AICC chief Sonia Gandhi. Well, the drubbing in the elections is seeing many heads rolling in several key Congress-ruled states. And up next, we could even look at a Maharashtra CM Prithvira Chauhan facing the axe. There's been a lot of talk along that front ever since Congress lost so badly. Uh, it was being said that Chauhan could pay for the dismal performance in Maharashtra. And after Assam, is it Haryana and Maharashtra next? Well, we'll have to wait and watch. And while well, BJP today sought to defend the government's decision to hike both passenger fares and freight rates, saying it has only implemented what the previous government proposed and got approved in the interim budget. The BJP added that it had not opposed the uh, hiking of fares as well as freight rates with the fuel prices as proposed by the previous UP regime in parliament, as it understands the needs of railways in modernizing its infrastructure and ensuring safety. In fact, the UPA government had already initiated the fair hike according to BGP leaders ahead of its tenure ending, but it was kept in abeyance by the new government in view of the model code of conduct in force. But even as there is so much of chaos over it, the Congress has come out in huge numbers to protest against the decision, considering, of course, that the BJP has come down harshly upon the UPA in the past over hiking our railway fares. Now they have decided it is their turn to do the same. Several of them were seen protesting, waving flags and even raising slogans against the BJP government, demanding a rollback. 
Of course, uh, we understand that even within the NDA, quite a bit of trouble brewing as uh, the NDA's Tamil allies, which includes the likes of DMDK, uh, MDMK and several other parties, have gone on to oppose the hike and have demanded a rollback. Remember, the Union Railways Minister, Sadhananda Gowda, is uh, under a world of pain right now, considering, of course, that there is so much opposition to this decision. Well, a day after Campakola Housing Society residents thwarted the plans of Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation to evict them, the civic body officials are expected to use force and enter the premises to demolish the illegal flats today. The BMC has registered a case against the residents for unlawfully restraining the government officials for performing their duties. This comes after the civic agency squad accompanied by Mumbai police that set out to demolish 140 illegal flats in the Campakola Housing Society returned without taking any action as the Belaga residents opposed their entry into the complex yesterday. As a high-pitched drama played out, Chief Minister Prithviraj Chauhan ruled out enacting a law to regularize the illegal flats but said he was amenable to considering a remedial compromise formula if it was brought by the residents. The residents were joined by several leaders as well as activists of the Nationalist Congress Party, Maharashtra Navnirman Sena, the BJP, Shiv Sena as well as the Republican Party of India, who spoke up for the residents and urged the concerned authorities to take steps to prevent the demolition or at least give more time to the residents.